Today's video may contain some subject matter that some viewers may find disturbing, and viewer discretion is advised. And if you have a story you would like to send my way, just go to asthereavendreams.com and click the big ol' button to do so. And of course, thank you. Growing up, I knew that I was adopted. My parents were always very open about it with me, and they gave me as much information as they knew, or could, when I asked questions. They have and always will be my parents to me, but as I got older, I was curious about my biological parents. I wanted to know more about them, who they were, and what they looked like. Not to mention I thought it was important to know about any possible genetic or health concerns. So, with the information I was given by my parents, and the adoption place that they went through, I was able to learn more about my mother as she consented to be contacted by me if I wanted it. I spoke to my biological mother on the phone, and to my surprise, she was happy to hear from me, and the conversation just felt natural. Because of how well this went, I made plans to go and meet her in person. However, she lived in Utah and my family and I lived in Wyoming, so I made a solo road trip out of it. My parents were even happy for me and encouraged it. I was in a great mindset at the time. Things were going well and I felt like I was both getting closure and filling some holes in my life. It was a great day to be on the road. The weather was perfect and there was minimal traffic, and I was just enjoying the drive while also playing out different scenarios and making plans with my biological mother. However, as the sun was beginning to set, I started to become tired. I guess probably because I was too excited, I didn't really want to sleep yet. So instead, I stopped to get a bite to eat hoping that it would give me some energy and keep me going. It worked for a few hours, but ultimately I wasn't going to be able to avoid it. I had taken long trips like this before on my own, and I didn't need much, so I typically just slept in my car rather than getting a hotel room. I took the next exit and pulled into the parking lot of a store that was 24 hours. I felt that those were at least safer, as there was always someone there, and in the case that I needed to use the restroom, I had one available. I actually did go in the store. I think it was like a convenience store, but not a gas station, as there were no pumps. I grabbed something to drink and used the restroom and started heading back to my car. As I was walking there, I started hearing someone shouting from behind me. It was as if they were trying to get someone's attention, but... It didn't sound alarming, scared, or angry. But since it was shouting nonetheless, I turned around to see what was happening. I saw a normal looking guy, maybe in his 40s. His hair was long and stringy, and he also had a pretty long beard. He was wearing jeans and a denim jacket with a dark colored shirt underneath. To my surprise, he was waving me down. I stopped to hear him out, and as he caught up to me, he asked me if I had a cigarette. I apologized and told him I didn't smoke, and he seemed like he was trying to figure out something else to say or ask. He then looked at my hand as I was carrying my bottle of tea, and asked if I had anything else to drink. The guy seemed completely normal, and maybe just a little down on his luck or something, or hell, Maybe he was just a mooch and was trying to get away with anything he could for free. Either way, he wasn't being aggressive or annoying about it, so I pulled out the change that I had gotten from my purchase. I paid with a 10, so I had a 5 left and some 1s that I just shoved into my pocket and gave it to the man. He smiled and seemed genuinely thankful for it, making a comment about how he would be able to get smokes and a drink with it. I just kind of smiled back and said something like, Yeah, no problem. Enjoy your night. He waved goodbye and headed back towards the store. 
I had parked close to the front and then drove it to the back of the lot, parked and settled in to sleep for the night. I drifted off to sleep pretty quickly, but then I remembered hearing what sounded like scratching. I was still in half of a sleep state and thought that it was just part of my dream. You know the feeling, kind of like when you hear your alarm in your dream. But then when the sound became faster and a bit louder, it finally jolted me awake, and I looked around to find the source of the sound. It didn't take me long to figure it out, because when I looked over at the passenger door, I saw the same guy from earlier messing with the door handle. I turned on my cab light and cracked the window on my side, the driver's side, to ask him what he was doing. The guy didn't even jump or look away from the handle when I did this, so... I knocked on the passenger window to get his attention. He finally looked up at me and, with a deadpan look on his face, asked if I would let him in so that we could talk. However, something seemed... off. The monotone way that he said it and how he was persistent on trying the door put me on edge, so... I didn't unlock the door or anything, but I asked what he wanted to talk about. He refused to answer. He just kept saying in the same robotic voice, I just want to talk about things. Please, open the door. Again, that uneasy feeling was still there, and even though I had given this guy some money, there was no way I was going to let this stranger in my car, in a small enclosed area. I told him that I couldn't and that I needed to sleep, but he just shouted no at me and continued trying the handle, but then started getting more aggressive with it. After this was going on for a few moments, trying to figure out what I could do to get him to leave, I decided it was best to just leave myself. I had put my keys in the glove box, and as I went to grab them, this guy's demeanor changed. He began kicking the door and slamming into the window. I could see it slightly bending and began to worry that he was actually going to manage to break it. With my hands shaking, I tried to put the key in the ignition and start the car. I managed to get it started and burned out before he could break the window at least, but I had to go around a median to leave, which, unfortunately, gave this guy enough time to pick up a rock and chuck it at my car and unfortunately caused my rear view window to crack. I got out of that parking lot and saw the guy in my mirror chasing me for a second until I reached the intersection. I had only been asleep for around two hours, but with my heart now racing, I was fully awake and decided to just not stop driving. I didn't stop until the sun came up, which I finally took a break at a McDonald's. I called my parents from there and told them what happened, but I tried to keep it lighthearted so as to not worry my mother. After talking to them, and a quick meal, I was feeling way more grounded, and I got back on the road to finish my drive. I arrived at my biological mother's home after that with no other incidents, but I also didn't stop again, other than the normal food or restroom break. Obviously, I don't know what that guy's intentions were, but because of that feeling that wouldn't go away, I can't help but feel that it wasn't going to be to ask for more money or just an innocent conversation. The fact that his demeanor changed within a second terrified me even more, so I was just glad that I got out of there before he was able to get in, and even more thankful that I woke up to those initial sounds. This was something that happened when I was around four or five years old. Of course, I know this was really young, so I didn't have all the details, so this was also put together with the help from my dad, as it did involve the two of us. I remembered parts of this from my perspective, but I'll also include what my dad saw and experienced too, so I apologize if it does jump around a bit. This was sometime in the early 90s. My family, which was my mom and dad, 
my baby sister, and myself lived near the border of Oklahoma and Texas. My dad had gotten a phone call about his mom falling ill, and they were afraid that she wouldn't make it much longer, so he wanted to go be with her in Mexico. Both of my parents were working full-time jobs, so they were kind of stuck. My mom wouldn't be able to watch both of us while working, but they also couldn't afford to have us all go. So, they decided that my dad would take me with him since I was older, and my mom would stay home with my sister since she was a newborn anyways, and she could bring her with her to work. So my mom made us some food for the road, and after packing a bag for both of us and bringing my favorite toys, we headed out late one night. That way we could get through a lot of the driving while I slept. Plus, it was a little cooler. It was the middle of summer, and it was unbearably hot. The AC barely worked, and we couldn't have it on at all times, otherwise the car would start running funny. We also had a very old car that could fall apart at any time, so driving at night was almost preferable. Unfortunately, we started having troubles with the car in the middle of the drive. I remember seeing a lot of white smoke, and my dad said that it was sputtering. Thank God we weren't on a deserted and empty part of the highway, though. With his hazards on, he was able to slowly take an exit, got past and stared at by multiple cars, and then rolled into the parking lot of a rundown truck stop. I do remember being my younger self asking some form of, Are we there? To which my dad told me that he had to fix the car. Instead of pulling into a parking spot, he pulled up to the curb close to the building. There was a picnic table in the grass nearby that had an umbrella over it. My dad pulled me out of the car and had me sitting at the table, and he gave me a few of my toys and a juice box. He told me to stay there no matter what while he looked at the car. As mentioned, it was very hot at the time, and when we talked about this when I was older, he told me that he didn't want to leave me in the car and risk me overheating, so... He thought the next best thing would be for me to sit there in the shade. I was still pretty close to him, where all he had to do was turn his head to the left and he would see me, and he would probably hear me if I tried talking to him. The problem, however, wouldn't be with me overheating, but himself. He said that he was already feeling ill and felt like his blood pressure was high, but he chalked it up to just being stressed out and hot. He said after finding out what was wrong with it, he would sit with me to relax for a bit before we got back on the road, but he wouldn't get that far. He popped the hood, got into the driver's seat to get something, and ended up passing out. I didn't know that anything was happening. I just sat on the bench as I was told and shared my juice with my stuffed animal that I'd had. At one point, I saw a man walk out of the store, and I remember thinking that he reminded me of my uncle. My uncle, Lewis, was a truck driver, and he always had on a pair of overalls, a cowboy hat, and sunglasses. This man was dressed the same way, so when he looked at me and smiled, I smiled and waved back. I watched him as he walked along the side of the building, seeming to be looking around, and then did a sharp turn and headed back in my direction. He then stood right across from me and said, Hello. I remember saying hi back, and I think I asked him if he knew my Uncle Lewis. He laughed and said that he thought he might, and then asked who I was with. I told him I was with my dad and pointed at our car. The guy then said something like, Looks like your daddy could use some help. How about we surprise him with some ice cream? It's really hot out here. Again, I was really young. I knew it was hot because my dress was sticking to me and starting to make me feel uncomfortable. I could tell something was wrong with my dad by the way that he was acting and how much he was sweating. This guy also seemed very nice. And because he did appear to be like my uncle, I thought it would be okay. I also thought that this was supposed to help my dad, either with the car or to cool off, or maybe just to make him happy, and that's of course what I wanted. 
I wanted to help him, so I agreed to go with this guy. I stood up, and I went to walk around the other side of the bench and grabbed the man's hand. As we started walking, that was about the same time that my dad woke up. He said when he came to, his immediate thought was me. He didn't know how long he had been out, so he jumped out of the car and saw me walking away with an unknown man. That's when he started running toward us, but he said that his legs felt like concrete. So his next option was to yell. The only thing he managed to get out was, Maria, peligro, which was basically danger in Spanish. My dad's bilingual, and I was starting to learn Spanish alongside my English, but I didn't know it very well. However, one of the things I was taught was stranger danger. However, he would later learn this, but my dad was amid a heat stroke, so with being very weak, all he could muster was danger. After shouting this, he stumbled forward, falling onto the ground, hitting his head on the curb. Hearing the fear in my father's usually booming voice definitely startled me, and when I saw him fall, I immediately screamed, and the guy that I was walking with took off. My dad and I both remember the guy being white, but of course, we don't know if he knew Spanish and knew what my dad had just said, or if it was the fact that my dad had caught him, so he took off. I ran to my dad, who was now on the ground, and all I knew to do was scream, cry, and shake him trying to wake him up. A lady in the truck stop heard all this and ran out to try and help, and after that, it all kind of ran together. I remember a few other people helping by putting cold rags on my dad. I remember the ambulance coming and then my dad waking up. They had to calm him down as he was panicking because he couldn't see me initially. The lady was sitting on the bench with me trying to keep me calm and keep me out of the EMT's way. When I called out for him, though, he knew I was okay, so he calmed down too. I know the EMTs wanted him to go to the hospital to see if he'd gotten a concussion, but he refused. After he cooled down, he said he was feeling much better, and that he needed to fix his hot car still so that we could get back on the road. The lady that was with me had my dad pull the car into the truck garage to take a look at it while he rested inside in the AC. My dad said that the issue had something to do with the radiator, and they only asked him to pay for the part, which they had, and that they weren't going to charge him for labor. I remember the lady being very kind. She asked me questions about myself, my family, all while the EMTs were there to keep me calm. She gave me a push pop and some water and let me keep the little pool stuffed animal toy thing she gave me. It was like one of those water footballs that you toss around in a pool, but it was a rabbit. I think. She'd soaked it in cold water to keep me cool as well. To wrap things up, the guy unfortunately fled. He was driving a big truck, so they had his license plate number and knew the business thanks to the giant logo on the trailer. We used this to contact the company and police to report it, but my dad said that he never heard anything back, so we just assumed that they either never found him or more likely, didn't take it seriously. We did make it to Mexico, with only a day to spare before his mother passed away. It was one hell of a trip for us, and I became even closer with my dad after that. It's like we really became partners, always watching out for each other. This happened to me and my boyfriend when we went on a road trip a few years ago. It wasn't our first one, nor the last one, so we were pretty accustomed to the road. We knew our limits when it came to how long we could drive without stopping, when we needed to sleep, things like that. We both typically stayed awake to keep each other company, but one of us would occasionally take a nap if we knew we were going to be switching out and driving through the night. That's actually what takes us to the incident that I wanted to share. 
we were taking a road trip towards the northeast to see one of our favorite bands, and it was only about a 20 hour drive. We wanted to do it in one go, giving us more time and money to spend at our destination, so we made arrangements and planned out how long we would both drive so as to not have one person drained or driving more than the other. I feel like this is something that a lot of people don't think about, which can lead to a lot of accidents. So make sure to plan this out to some extent before getting on the road. The drive started fine, and I agreed to drive first, and it would be more during the day, as my boyfriend, Wyatt, has better eyesight, and I also don't like to drive at night. We stopped as the sun was going down to fuel up and grab something quick to eat, and then we started back on our path knowing that we still had a bit of a drive ahead of us. However, I was starting to feel a bit drowsy, and after letting Wyatt know, he suggested that I try to sleep some to prepare in case we needed to switch out. I asked him if he was sure, and he said that he was, affirming that he didn't feel tired in the slightest, so... I got comfortable in my seat and started to drift off. It started off as the light dozing where I could still hear the music playing, but then your body starts to feel heavy and you know that you're starting to really fall asleep. Soon after, I was pretty clean out, as I remember I couldn't hear the music anymore. I don't recall the details of it now, but I know that I was sleeping heavy enough that I was dreaming at the time because I remember thinking it was weird. However, I was abruptly awoken by the worst scream I had ever heard coming from Wyatt. I just remember it sounded like he was terrified, and when I opened my eyes, all I saw was a bright light that pretty much swallowed us. It was dead of night, yet all I could see was this light. That's when Wyatt hit the brakes and swerved the car over towards the side of the road. However, this ended up being a dream within a dream, I guess, because I woke up screaming, startling Wyatt enough to try to pull over and calm me down. I remember tears streaming down my face and asking him what happened and what that was, but he looked confused and asked me what I was talking about. After I finally stopped talking and listened to him, I realized that everything was fine. He said that nothing had happened on the road. In fact, there hadn't even been any cars in sight, and I woke up, screaming, causing him to jump. So, I explained to him what I had seen, or dreamt, I guess, and he comforted me again, saying that we were okay. Everything felt so real, down to even hearing the music playing and the low humming sound of the tires on the road. We sat there on the shoulder with our hazards on, just giving ourselves a moment to compose ourselves, talk, and just calm our nerves before getting back on the road. Wyatt then made some kind of joke and then asked me to grab a snack from our bag in the back. I reached back to grab it, and as I was turning back around and putting my seatbelt back on, we started to see some lights in the distance, coming from the opposite direction. It was one of those quick glances for me at first, and I went back to opening our bag of chips. When we then started to hear the blaring sound of a semi-horn. Being on such an empty and dark road, it was odd to hear it, which caused us to look back up at it again. We watched as we heard the horn get louder and saw the lights get closer and brighter. We watched, and as it got closer, we were able to make out another light coming from the side of the truck. We continued watching as it got close enough to finally make out what the light was. It was actually sparks from where a tire should be. The truck had its cabin lights and brights on, and was practically laying on the horn. We watched as it passed us, horrified as this huge semi slowly drifted through to the other lanes of traffic. It was grinding the cement barrier on our side. We turned around and saw this until the light was barely visible and we could no longer hear the horn. I didn't know what to say or what to do. If we were still on the road, 
what would have happened to us? And my dream, it had to be related, right? I woke up to Wyatt's scream, but also a bright light, like what you would expect if a large truck was coming right at you, right? I think Wyatt was trying to keep me calm, or maybe himself, and said, Well, that was pretty scary. I nodded in agreement, but we just continued to sit there. After a few minutes, he pulled out his phone and called 911 to report what we had just seen while I sat there silently. After the call ended, we got back on the road and drove in silence, practically tensing up at every car that we saw that came from the opposite side. I think that this incident did a number on both of us, because we ended up stopping at some grocery store and just slept there overnight. The next morning, I still felt a little shaken, but I tried to move on thinking that we got lucky. We'll just continue being vigilant on the road and enjoy our vacation. The rest of the trip didn't have anything similar happen, and Wyatt seemed like he had gotten past it, but I still had this lingering in my head as to what all of that was about. I know deja vu. I've experienced that many times before, but this dream felt so real. Like, it happened, but we just reset or something. Wyatt and I have since gone our separate ways, but we're still friends. We never talked about this since the time of that road trip, and when I had tried to bring it up before, he never really wanted to have the conversation. Other than my sister and a friend, I haven't really talked to anyone about this because it's something that still disturbs me. But I finally felt the urge to share it to see if anyone else has experienced something similar. That way, at least I would know that I'm not alone. Hey there. I've been listening to your channel for a few months now, and hearing some of your older videos reminded me of an event that happened to me and a friend last year, actually. This happened when me and my friend Morgan took a road trip to Las Vegas. It wasn't the first time we had done this, and we've also learned a few things since our first trip, so by now, I felt that we were a bit more prepared. I took my car to the shop to make sure everything was working as it should be, and then we made a well-prepped cooler of healthy snacks and drinks, as well as a few energy drinks. And we packed our bags and probably overpacked, but made sure that we had everything as well as some extras. I even refilled my emergency kit that I kept in my trunk. It had the normal first aid stuff as well as a towel and a blanket, things like that. I had a few people making fun of me for my kit, including my boyfriend, saying that I was overdoing it, but I always said I'd rather have it and never need it than, well, you know. I was living with Morgan and her sister at the time, which made it even more convenient for us, meaning we were able to leave when we wanted without wasting more time for meeting up. We stopped to have a light breakfast and coffee and then got on the road. The drive, for the most part, was pretty uneventful. I mean, it was a great drive. We did it in early spring, so it wasn't cold and not too hot. It was honestly perfect. We just didn't have anything crazy or hectic happen or get in the way. We had several planned stops on the way, including a national park and a museum, both of which were fantastic. I got to make my own geode, and it had a beautiful amethyst in it. I believe we had just hit the Nevada border and decided to stop at a hotel for the night. We still had probably a day's worth of driving to do, so we wanted a place to stay and freshen up. The hotel was your average-looking hotel. We took our much-needed showers and enjoyed the included breakfast the next morning, then just headed back to our room to get out of there. This is where things got pretty chaotic. We had probably only been on the road for about an hour, just talking or whatever on a pretty open highway. 
there weren't many cars whatsoever on the road, which was pretty nice. But then I had a jeep with dark tinted windows come up behind me. They weren't riding too close or anything, but it was just something I took notice of. However, they did start getting closer, and I again made a mental note of it. However, it wasn't consistent. They would get close and then let off, and this would repeat. That's when I mentioned it to Morgan, because I thought if they were in such a rush, why not just go around? It wasn't a single-lane highway or anything, so they very well could have. Morgan said something about them either just being an ass or trying to be intimidating, and said not to worry about it too much at the time. However, it kept happening, and they were pushing it with how close they were getting, which made me lose my train of thought while we were talking. I pointed it out again to Morgan, and she turned back to look at it. We both agreed that it was getting weird, and said that we should slow down. I was using cruise control, so I wasn't going under, and was probably going slightly over. We were hoping that they would grow impatient and finally just pass us. It looked like it was finally happening when the jeep went around, and was then in the lane next to me. They were parallel to me, and because of what they were doing, we both looked over at them. The side windows were also dark, so we didn't see the driver until they rolled down their window. What we saw was some normal-looking guy, completely bald head, wearing some kind of plain t-shirt and sunglasses. Yet, I could tell by the wrinkles on his forehead and clenched jaw that he looked furious and I had no idea as to why. I kind of looked at him with a, can I help you, look, because I didn't know what his problem was. As mentioned, it's not like I was driving erratically or stopping him from going around. The guy then motioned for me to pull over, and I immediately shook my head no. This only seemed to enrage him more as he began to yell at me and telling me to pull over. I think I speak for both of us when I say that we were starting to grow a bit uneasy. There weren't many cars around, and at that exact moment, we were the only ones. The guy then slowed down and got back behind us, so Morgan immediately pulled out her phone and started recording it. I just continued driving, hoping to see an exit soon. I was trying to change the GPS to the next exit or gas station or anything that would put us around more people, when we felt the car jolt forward a bit. This guy had now hit my car. Morgan started screaming and we were both asking what the hell this guy was trying to do. Then he rammed us again. I'm trying to keep us on the road while having a panic attack when Morgan said that she was going to call the cops and turned back around in her seat. She was trying to explain to the dispatcher what was happening, and we were struggling to give our location. I knew the name of the highway, but kept missing the mile markers due to being so obviously distracted. I was able to find it thanks to my GPS, and the operator instructing Morgan to check it. As they were talking to us about what to do, the guy again went to the next lane window down and started shouting something that I couldn't make out. I guess he wasn't satisfied because he then hit my car from the side, which made me swerve. I had to try to correct it so that I didn't run off the road. Morgan again was screaming to the operator what was happening when he hit us one more time, closer to the back, which caused a very hard fishtail to start. And yes, I know how to correct a car when that happens, before someone says something, but my efforts were in vain because the guy again managed to hit me, causing us to careen into the oncoming exit barrels, right at the exits that we were going to try to take. We slammed into it on the passenger side. Both of us were still conscious, but hurt, so we were completely aware that this guy had driven past but backed up to look at us with a creepy smile before taking off again. That was the last time that we saw him. We sat there, 
sobbing, terrified that this guy might come back. And I was of course worried about how damaged my car was. We weren't even in the same state that we lived in. How would we get home if it was totaled? It wasn't long before another car approached us and stopped to see if we were okay. It was an older guy. Like, a lot older, so we weren't exactly afraid of him. He just looked like a normal good Samaritan, honestly. I started explaining what happened while also trying to help Morgan find her phone that, of course, went flying out of her hand. Once we found it, the operator was still on the phone. Which, by the way, after hearing the screams and the crash, I applaud them for still being there with us. We told them what had happened, and they explained that officers were almost there. I was able to get out of my door, and Morgan had to climb over to my side to get out. The old man stayed with us until the police arrived, and we gave him a hug, thanking him for trying to keep us calm and offering his coffee to us. We gave the police as much information as we could about the man and the vehicle, and how this came out of nowhere. They tried to play it off as road rage taken too far, but if so, it was only one-sided. Like I said, I never even saw the jeep prior to him tailgating me. I didn't recognize the man, nor did Morgan. We tried to explain this to the police, but whether or not they believed us, they did agree that this was taken way too far. We had my car towed to the nearest auto shop, and the cops gave us a ride there for us to wait. Sadly, the whole right side was smashed in, and we were unable to open the front passenger door, but just about everything under the hood was still fine. They did replace the wheel on the passenger side, since it was bent or something, and they tried to pull out some of the dents on that same side, but the door was still pretty difficult to open. Overall, we were really shaken up, and the fact that we were so close to our destination, we thought it would be a waste to turn back. Once we calmed down and the car was done, we took it slow driving on some side roads until we were ready to get back onto the highway. I was still super nervous about it, worried that somehow this guy may have exited or been in the same area, but thankfully, we never had any more incidents. That's not to say that I didn't have a slight mental freakout any time I saw a jeep or someone that was following too close. We did give the police our information in case they ever saw the jeep, or the guy, but as of me writing this, neither of us have heard from them. This experience was terrifying for both of us, but it also left us confused. Again, I get road rage. I've shamefully flipped some people off for cutting me off, but I would never try to risk their life. On top of this, I have no idea what the hell I could have done to set this guy off. We do still go on road trips, Morgan and I together and with others, but I don't think that I'll ever forget the feeling I had that day, or feeling like I was being targeted, or even the feeling that someone wanted me dead, or at least severely injured. So if you're out on the road, just take precautions. Make sure that people know where you are, and how to read mile markers. Oh, and always wear your seatbelt. So that, my friends, was today's collection of scary road trip stories, or road trip horror stories, or whatever I put on the thumbnail. I can't open it right now because I've already hit the record button, and I would have to pause the recording to go look at the file. And yeah, I don't want to do that. So, road trip stories! Hopefully you all enjoyed them. I know that I did. I know we had hitchhiker stories earlier this week, so road trip was just a, a natural um, partner to go with that, I suppose. And it's April, so road trips are a thing that's going to happen here very soon. Also, this is the last video of April, I just realized that. That's crazy. 
Where did April go? It just started yesterday. It just started yesterday, guys. Where did it go? Anyways, hopefully you all enjoyed these stories. I know I did. Road trips are always fun. Patience and I once took a really long road trip. Um, drove north from here and then west and then south from there and then back east. And it was kind of cool. Yeah. Till you get to Kansas and the, uh, the western part of Kansas is just empty. After going through the beautiful parts of Colorado, hitting that flat western Kansas uh, skyline... Kind of boring. The wind turbines are kind of cool, though. I like those. Anyways, like I guess I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel and liked what you heard, consider subscribing, as that does help tremendously. You can also do things such as leaving me a comment down below, which helps the algorithm say, hey, people like this video, or dislike the video. It's, it's, it's interactions. It doesn't matter if it's good or bad. You can also do the Super Thanks, which is a tip for the channel, or join memberships or Patreon. We get early access to content like this as long as I'm early. I am cutting it hella close today. It is 4.40. This video goes up in less than an hour, so... Urgh, bad Raven. Anyways. Um, yeah, I hope you're all having a beautiful day. I really do. Um, it's kind of kind of chilly overnight here. Day is kind of nice. It's 60-something, I think, but... Yeah. I hope that I do see you again here very soon. And I hope that you remember that until then, you are loved, you are valid, you're the best you that you can be, and you should never let anyone tell you otherwise. And my friends, until I see you again, much love, and sleep well.